Does he look like me? I think once he got his hair cut, he kind of looks like me. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I am a board certified interventional radiologist in New Jersey. Now, I don't know what is happening in the world right now, but ever since I did that one video on quitting med school, there has been another video on quitting med school. And then one of my favorite YouTubers who happens to also be in the medical space and is also a physician in the UK, released a video saying that he's quitting medicine and not being a doctor anymore and becoming a full-time YouTuber. So I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's in the water, but I have no choice but to watch this video with you all. Again, I haven't seen this video. Hopefully he will impart some wisdom on us. It's like 40 minutes long or something. So I'll probably have to like trim it up a little bit, dice it. I'm really curious to see what he says because usually he says some pretty profound things. It's a long video. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Let's get into it. Let's go. To the tripod by the computer. Let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Right, so I have been agonizing about this for many, many months, but I think I'm finally at the point where I can comfortably admit to myself and to you guys that I'm gonna be leaving medicine for good. What is the purpose of work? Here we go. Getting a little philosophical here, but probably some juicy stuff in here, so we'll see. And the way I see it, there's probably five different things that we work for the sake of. The first one is money. How does he? Does he have an iPad he's like writing down on? I want that. How do I do that? Someone let me know uh, how you can write and it come up on YouTube. I don't think I know that. So the next reason as to why we go to work or why we have careers, if we ignore the money thing, is to have fun. Yeah. Maybe fun is too simplistic a word. Maybe you prefer the word satisfaction or enjoyment or pleasure or anything like that. I like the word fun. Are his videos sped up at all? Because if he talks this fast, that's really impressive. I, if, it sounds like I'm watching him at like, one and a quarter or 1.5 speed or something. Honestly, when it came to my decision to leave medicine, the fun bit bit was like a pretty large one because I genuinely did enjoy the job. Like it was quite fun. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, in residency, even med school, and even now as an attending, like you develop relationships with your colleagues, especially people who are going through residency and all that stuff with you. And that's part of it. You, you like become a team and you do it together that makes it fun and less sucky. <laughs> for lack of better words. But I don't know, I've always become really close with all of my colleagues that I've gone through these places with, my med students. Like for instance, in med school, all of my close friends in med school are now my best friends. We talk literally every single day. We have a group chat and we visit each other throughout the year all the time. Residency, I have friends from residency who I still talk to every single day. Fellowship, we have a group chat and fellowship that we literally talk to every single day, share cases with all that stuff. So that is one of the best parts of going through training and being a doctor. There were lots of aspects of the job I didn't enjoy. Like I didn't enjoy like the fact that it was a full-time job, the fact that you have to, you know, just struggle to take time off when you want to take time off, the lack of autonomy that you sometimes have as a junior doctor. But overall, I actually had a pretty good time working as a doctor for two years. And so- if So he only worked for two years. Did he finish? Was he in residency still or was he just, because that's the difference. If you don't like the job while you're in residency, it is markedly different as an attending versus being a trainee. So if he never got to attending hood, or whatever you call it. I don't know if he really saw the best side of it because I love this side so, so much better. I can't even get over it. Training is tough. It's still tough being an attending, but you know, it's, it's so much better. So much more time, so much more freedom. You have complete autonomy. No one breathing down your back telling you what to do. It's just a lot easier and you can kind of think for yourself and do what you need to do for your patients. So much better. I couldn't shake the feeling that every day I was in the hospital, I was thinking, okay, hour by hour, this is just nowhere near as fun as I would be having, as much fun as I'd be having if I were hanging out in the studio, hanging out with the team, doing this YouTube thing, doing the internet thing, right, reading, writing. I kind of agree with that. I mean, look, I love my job and I would never leave it. I think, you know, my wife always asked me, like, if you won the lottery, you would still work, right? And I'm like, yeah, I think I would at least do like one or two days a week because I mean, I feel like I would be bored if I didn't. And plus, I like my job, it's fun. But when you don't like your job and you're making so much more money and then all your focus is on content creation and what you could be doing if you weren't there, then I mean, I get it. I've had those thoughts before too, but ultimately, I love my job. I guess he didn't like it as much. I wonder what field he was in, by the way. Does anybody know what field he's in? Comment below. Maybe if you're a doctor watching this or a medical student, maybe you do genuinely find it fun. And if you won the lottery, you would still continue to work in the emergency department. How do you know? What? I literally just said that. <laughs> 
even though medicine is fun, the other things that I'm not doing on the internet are more fun. And so fun is now not a factor to stay in medicine. Yeah, I get that. You only have one life, right? You obviously want to maximize your fun and you don't want to be miserable doing other things. So like he's saying, maximize your fun. And if he has more fun doing YouTube and content creation, all this stuff, why would he not just do that full time if he could? But it's hard to kind of get past that when you're a doctor, you train so hard and all that stuff. It's easy if he had like nothing else going for him and he also did YouTube. Obviously that's an easy transition. But when you have a big career that you've worked so hard for and study for countless hours, it's harder to leave that behind since you work so hard for it. Let's say I am an investment banker and I make, I don't know, $10,000 an hour. And let's say I volunteer at the local soup kitchen. If they wanted to genuinely help people, they could just put in an extra few hours at work, make $20,000 and then donate that money to the soup kitchen to allow the soup kitchen to hire a bunch more people to help a bunch more people. This is the whole thing that I tell people like, you know, straight to hustle, straight to work hard, but eventually you reach a point where you have to kind of delegate and have people do tasks for you because your time is more important. Your time is valuable and it's the only thing you have. Like your, your time is worth everything. So you need to maximize your time. And people have done studies that show how many lives an individual doctor saves in the course of their life. And depending on what estimates you look at, some say it's about seven lives, some say it's about 28 lives, 30 lives, something like that. But it doesn't take into account the fact that if I were not a doctor, the next other, like someone else will take my place. So if, if the average doctor saves seven years, seven lives over the course of their career, I feel like I've saved more lives like in fellow, my one fellowship year. Think of how many people I've treated who have come in with hemorrhagic shock after, you know, an accident of some sort and without me embolizing that bleeding artery, they wouldn't survive. We've definitely saved a lot of people. More than seven probably in my, yeah, I mean the last 365 days I have. So I guess it depends on specialty. I'm sure like trauma surgeons save way more than seven people throughout their career. When it comes to a developed world system, it's really the system that saves lives rather than the amazing prowess of an individual doctor. I agree with that because I mean, saving lives is a team sport, right? I mean, even think about when you call a code in the hospital, how many people come rushing in? It's a team effort. There's like 10 or 20 people who are in there trying to save a patient's life. It's not just one person, one doctor in there doing all the work. So maybe if I continue training for 20, 30 years, I'd have become special. But at this stage of my life, I felt I wasn't having any real impact that me as an individual could have working in medicine. I totally feel that. I mean, in residency, you're working under other physicians and you don't really feel that impact because at the end of the day, those patients you're working with are not your patients and you're really just taking care of them for that other doctor whose patients they are. And it's not really fulfilling, but you just kind of have to keep your mind in it that when I finish training, this will help me out and all that stuff. So, I mean, I totally agree, but like I said before, being a trainee is way worse than being on the other side of things. In a dream world, what would I be doing with my time? Working as a doctor does not fit into this kind of conception of my life. Yeah, I mean, it's clear to me that <laughs> He wants to do other things besides be a doctor, which is, I mean, I kind of gather because he used to talk about a lot of medical content and then kind of transitioned over to other stuff, which is kind of what I'm doing a little bit, but I still talk about medical stuff because I still enjoy it. And a lot of people follow me for the medical content, but I mean, you know, at least he found this thing he likes. The hardest thing to do in life is find something you actually enjoy doing. And he enjoys doing content creation, all this stuff, teaching and potentially giving lectures to med students, all that stuff. That's something I want to do as well. I love teaching. So eventually I'll probably do that, especially when I retire, but maybe even before I retire, I would like to work at a med school teaching and be fun. I still want to be a physician, interventional radiologist, also do YouTube on the side and then teach on the side as well. I don't know if I could ever just drop that substantially, but I guess it's kind of different because the salaries are so much larger in the US versus the UK. So I wonder if he was making my salary, for instance, or a subspecialist salary, if he would quit medicine. I'm curious. Ali, respond to that. I want to know what you think about that. Because I know it'd be really hard to quit if you had a higher salary versus what he was making on YouTube. A big part of it has been like, oof, I don't want to lose that badge, that badge of honor, that badge of prestige that being a doctor gives you. But you know, it's not really a particularly, I think, good reason to do something you're not necessarily fully passionate about. Um, so we'll kind of put that aside. That's like saying you become bankrupt and you have a Lamborghini and you don't want to get rid of the Lamborghini because you don't want to lose that prestige it gives you while driving. And that's exactly what he's saying. It sounds ridiculous to say, but he's still a doctor at the end of the day. He's just not a practicing physician. So, you know, I get it. That doesn't really weigh heavy on me either, but it's still something you worked so hard for and to lose that it's kind of sad to say goodbye and then i was interviewed on a podcast called the school of greatness which is an amazing podcast by this guy called lewis hose who's fantastic 
And the podcast interview started off about like multiple streams of income and ended up being sort of a therapy session where Lewis was sort of coaching me through this problem that I was having around. And you could make, if you went all in, if you obsessed, if you gave your life to this mission, you could make 50 grand, maybe 55,000 in a year. If you went 60, 80 hours a week for the hopes in 10 years of making $120,000, maybe. Yes. <laughs> and you would save seven people's lives. Yes. As opposed to changing millions of people's lives through your content, which is the thing you love to do, which is teach. That's what I was saying. His salary is low, relatively speaking, especially to the US terms. He's making, it says here 27,000. I think he makes more than that uh, passively per, oh, that's per week. That's per week. I thought I made good passive income. 27, I thought that was per month. Whew, good for him. It's $100,000 a month plus, okay? I don't think there's much thinking about this. I think he has done well for himself. Obviously, the biggest fear of quitting your job, like for me, say I was in his shoes, I was quitting my job to be a full-time YouTuber, which technically I could make decent living, but I'd be afraid that like, what if I stop coming up with ideas? What if YouTube shut down their servers? What if nobody wanted to watch me anymore? Those are all real possibilities. However, if he was making this kind of money for this long and he invested it well, he likely wouldn't have to worry about it anyways if YouTube shut off right after that. So maybe if he has some cash flow from some real estate, other investments, dividends, all that kind of stuff, he doesn't have to keep working if he doesn't want to, but you know, he might as well if he's making this kind of money. If you got this far, I would love for you to leave a clover emoji in the comments as usual for these long rambly videos. Let me leave a clover emoji for him because he said that. Maybe I'll leave it after I put this video up. Oh man, it's not like he's gonna watch it anyways. Probably has no idea who I am. All right, so that officially concludes this video. I thought that was very good. I mean, he broke it down probably better than anybody I've ever seen for any reason to quit being a doctor and go to something else part-time or full-time. I mean, that was a great video. Everybody so far that I've done these videos for has come up with pretty compelling things of why they quit. And I get it, right? I mean, obviously, if you're going to quit something you worked so hard for, you need a very solid reason and totally agree with Ali on this one. So if you like this video, make sure you smash the like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already, and uh, leave a comment below. Tell me what kind of video you want me to react to next. Maybe if you made it this far, you should leave a clover emoji, just like Ali said on his last video. <laughs> So I know, like the video. Oh, and subscribe by the way, it's free. And I'll uh, see you all on the next one. Bye.